the spirit up there walk by design there's a spider on my computer okay now our text this morning focuses on god's design that's why i call it walk by design it focuses on god's design for family unfortunately our culture is attempting to change that they to redefine family specifically when it comes to marriage and if you continue reading on in ephesians 5 that's where we're heading towards and i do realize that uh, i've got a wedding on this this saturday doing some premarital counseling I realize how important it is to talk about this specific topic. We might have a marriage seminar soon. So just plan ahead and do it again. We did it four years, four years ago. So long. We have to do it again. I think our magic marriages are falling apart. We need to do a marriage seminar. <laughs> we need no so much. Okay. Um, so, um, Unfortunately, marriage, family, as we know it, and as the Bible, and as God designed it, is under attack. And we saw last week, we spoke about what it means to be full of the Spirit, and the result of being full of the Spirit, you can remember, it results in a spirit of praise, it's a spirit of thanksgiving, and a spirit of submission. We spoke about those three things. You see, living according to God's design for our lives and God's design for families is only possible if you are full of the Spirit. It's only then that you can have healthy relationships in marriage, in family, friends, to be filled with the Spirit. That's the key in walking the design. As we speak about walking by design this morning and we read our scripture, Remember this, that's the backdrop of all of this. If we are not full of the Spirit, all these things that we read, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. If you choose not to follow God's original design, if you choose to reject God's design, His plan for marriage, for family, it will in the end lead to judgment and it will lead to tragedy. And I'll and in history, we'll see that. You can study history, three, four hundred years. The Roman Empire fell apart because of marriages that fell apart. Family fell apart. Now, we see all through the Bible where people thought, thought. If you study the Old and the New Testament, you'll see people thought for themselves they knew better than God. And every time... People thought they know better than God. It always led to judgment and tragedy. Let me give you one example. Okay, we'll get to our text now. Remember Adam and Eve? Who knows Adam and Eve? Okay, just making sure. Adam and Eve, for one moment, chose against God. They thought they, they listened to the devil and decided they know better. And they did what God did not design them or ask them to do. And you know how that worked out? And until this day, the world continues to fall in that trap. And, and there's a saying that we say in history. Now, if you have been in history class, your history teacher has taught you this, that the world learns from history that we don't learn from history that true we make the same mistakes over and over and over again when people walk away from god's design and follow their own ways it will always end up in tragedy always and in the same way when you talk about family with marriage with the relationship between husband and wife parents and children masters and their servants god is the designer and he shows us how to live according to his design how to walk by design so today we are continuing in ephesians chapter 5 if you've got your bibles you can turn to verse 22 
and we're going to read together from verse 22. So the next portion of scripture, chapter 6, verse 1 to, I'm not sure exactly to what verse, but we'll continue on relationships. It's all about, remember when we start chapter 4, I said it's about relationships. And um, let's read together from verse 22, when it starts with the wives. Who's excited? <laughs> okay. A marriage sermon. The wives are excited. The husbands, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Trouble. Okay, let's read. Verse 22 says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such things that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. Yes, we love our own bodies. Huh? Have you ever seen a man stand in front of a mirror? Wives don't say, you saw your husband in front of the mirror, he's got now that 30 few years of stomach in front, but he thinks he's Rambo. <laughs> he still thinks that six pack is somewhere down there. It is, I know. And that's, that's what I read when I read this, that's what I see. Husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church because we are members of the body, of his body. Therefore, a man should leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let he, the wife see that she respects her husband. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We come this morning humbly asking that you will lead us through your spirit into understanding. Help us, Lord, to see our own faults, to recognize them, to repent from our sins, and Lord, to choose to follow your design, to walk the way you want us to walk, and not try to know better than you do. And I pray this morning that you'll speak to every husband and wife, to every person, every family represented here so that we can truly, truly know your design for us and walk accordingly. We ask this in your wonderful name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Good. Now, verse 33 is a very interesting verse. I actually do a whole premarital counseling session just on that verse, but we're not going to do it this morning. But this scripture portion that we just read, is God's design for marriage. It's a lot of, a lot is being said and packed into these few words. It's God's design for family. Man and a woman married with children. Go and read chapter 6. There's a man, there's a woman, and there are children. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I'm going to get in trouble because I read this yesterday, an article where a very uh, prominent preacher, John MacArthur, is being censored on YouTube because he said something against homosexuality. And let me tell you, it's going to get worse for the church. We're going to get censored. My video, uh, my is, will be uploaded on YouTube. Let's see if they say anything or do take it off. I don't know. But it's going to happen more and more where you 
when you, and the word of God will be under attack. And today in the media, there's this constant parade of divorce and sexual rebellion, abortion, sterilization, infidelity, homosexuality, feminism, children's rights, etc., etc. And we can go on and on and on. And we see this being this parade all over the place. And it's actually, I'm so tired of it. Many people are calling for the death of family as we know it. Some have this warped view that family is the legalization of servitude. And family is the means of human oppression. But it's because they don't understand God's word. It's because they don't know God and his design and his purpose for family for marriage for father for mother and children and it is good for your own life for your own protection for your own health if i can add to follow and walk god's design and not to think better now i'm not saying that every husband and wife every family is perfect just come and visit our home for a week or a few days. You'll find out we're not perfect. Amen? Oh, now I can stop. We see many families being torn apart. I, I, I see that. Many families broken because of sin. Because of the consequences of sin. Relationships broken. We see that every day. You probably know a few people already, your friends, your, your, your own family. And as church, we should always have compassion for those who are broken, for those families, for those who are living in broken homes, for, for uh, marriages that have been broken up. We should have compassion for that. But that does not mean the church should be silent and shy away from proclaiming the truth of what God's design is for family. We should never shy away from that. We should boldly proclaim the word of God. And listen to what Ephesians, uh, Deuteronomy 6 verse 24 says. If you follow God's design, if you live by God's word, it says, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, referring to the Ten Commandments now, and he says, to fear the Lord our God for our, for our good always. The law was given to Israel for their own good. That he might preserve us alive as we are this day. There's another scripture in chapter 10 verse 13. And to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord which I am commanding you today. For your good. So you need to understand. God's design is for your own good. God's word. His will. Is for your own good. He designed marriage. And the best thing you can do. Is walk by his design. It's for your own good. Follow the design. Walk the way God made you to be. See, God's design is not to make our lives miserable. To take fun out of our lives. That's not what God does. Or to punish women and reward men. When he says, wives, submit, submit to your husband. That's not what God's intention is. No. If God's wisdom, in God's wisdom and care... God knows what is best for each one of us. He knows what is best for husbands. He knows what is best for wives. He knows what is best for children and for masters and for servants. And if you think you know better, then you're a fool. Now, before we look at verse 22, it talks about wives Submitting to, of submitting to their husbands. I think it's important that we first understand this principle. And I want to just address this. 
And that is my, my first point, the direct lordship of Christ. We kind of address this in the membership class. This is a Baptist principles. Been taught in Baptist churches for 400 years. Now, what does it mean? It means that we believe Christ rules over every believer directly. The direct lordship of Christ. He rules over every believer directly and over every, every local church. Over this church. And he exercises his authority over us directly and he does not delegate that authority to anyone. That's what we have been proclaiming as Baptists for years. There's no one, and you can understand on the backdrop of why they, they made these principles because of the Protestant movement, the Catholic Church, that said, no, God speaks through the Pope. And he's the vicar. For that reason, say, no, no, every believer is under Christ directly. You don't need a priest to go and confess your sins. You can confess it to God directly. So when it comes to family, when it comes to marriages, we first need to understand that Christ is Lord of our family. Christ is Lord of the husband. Christ is Lord of the wife. Christ is Lord directly over your children. And he does not delegate this kind of authority he has to anyone. Nobody can take that place of Christ. And also husbands, his authority in that context is not delegated to you. Okay, now start with that. Now can you say Amen. You can say Amen. I know Baptists only say Hmm. And also husbands are not an authority unto themselves. They also stand directly under the Lordship of Christ. Just as the wife stands directly under the Lordship of Christ. So before we can talk about wife that must submit to the husband and what that entails, what it means, we must first understand that everyone is under Christ. Christ rules over every believer Husband, wife, children, master, servants, all believers are under the Lordship of Christ. But when a believer is said to submit to the leadership of a church, you can only do that if you're part of a local church. Yes, you are, we are the church of Christ. You can do church. It's not a building. It's not a place. But you cannot... Submit to one another or to a leadership of a church as we saw last week. Submit to one another. How do you do that on your couch at home doing church? Now, I'm not trying to point fingers to those online. I'm just saying you, there are a lot of people who don't believe they should be part of a local church. That's why we do membership classes to kind of get all those false ideas out of people's heads. Amen. When, when a believer is said to submit to a leadership of a church, it's not delegating Christ's authority to the leadership. The leadership also is under the direct lordship of Christ. And they, are, they have the responsibility given by Christ to oversee and care and keep watch over those who, um, the souls of, the members of the church and they are accountable towards Christ but they are not an authority unto themselves. The same with what we learned last week when we said that the result of being filled with the Spirit is the Spirit of submission. And what that means, it means that I count others more significant than myself. It means that I no, um, give up my rights, my independence, saying, I need you, you need me. We are a body in Christ, of Christ, and we need one another. We cannot function as church without one another. That's what it means. An attitude of servitude. 
an attitude of giving the responsibility to look after one another and not only for our own interests. So when, when we come to Ephesians 5 and husbands, uh, wives should submit under the husband, we should first start with the husband is under the direct lordship of Christ. Very important that we start there. He's the head of the wife. Doesn't mean he's the lord of the wife. Sorry, husbands, that position has been taken. Ek hoor nie die vrou ons al mense. Is net ek in my huis. Gebeer het nie daar. We also saw that submission does not mean I am better than you and that we are not equal. And the example we use is Philippians, Philippians 2, where Christ, equal to God, Son of God, He is God, equal, equal to His Father, took on the form of flesh, He became human, but He was still 100% fully God. He didn't come be less, He become unequal to His Father, but He willfully submitted Himself to the Father. So it doesn't change when you say a wife submits to the husband. Now the husband is the important person and the wife is the less important. And I think that's where the warped view comes in the world. The culture understands it wrong. They don't understand the word of God. They don't understand what it means. In Philippians 2 verse 9 it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him, this is Jesus Christ, the name of above all names, every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Lord over our lives as Savior, but let me tell you, He is also Lord over all, and one day even the non-believer will bow his knee and confess that Jesus is Lord, even if it's too late. You will not be in hell one day wondering, is Jesus true or not? You will definitely know. It's too late. Now, I made this slogan. I, I should have put it on the screen. And thought, I thought about this, and, and I, let me say it. You can write it down. If you walk by design, you will live by design. But if you don't walk by design, you will die by design. Can I say that again? If you walk by design, you will live by design. If you don't walk by design, you will die by design. To live in rebellion to God's authority is to live in deviance to God himself. And he ordains authority. So everyone is under God's authority. Husbands, wives, everyone, God's authority and he commands us to live by his design. And Paul says, and this is where we're going into the second point, when we talk about wives submitting to the husband, it says the following, wives, in verse 22, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. You see, wives submit to their husbands as to the Lord. In other words, they first submit to the Lord. And then to the husband. As to the Lord. They're under the Lordship of Christ. Yes, husband, sorry. Jesus Christ is your wife's Lord. And wives, the reason why some wives struggle to submit to their husbands is probably because they're not submitting to the Lord. Now let's look at the second point, and that's and I'm gonna start with the husbands before we grind the wives. Is that okay? Let's go for the husbands. 
Let's talk about the role of the husband. Verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. What is Paul saying? What does it mean? We see here that the role, the God's design, is that the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is head of the church. Now let me make, it's just a small um, observation, but it's important. Our text does not say, for the husband should be the head of the wife, or must be the head of the wife. It actually is making a statement of fact here, saying that the husband is the head of the wife. Even if you don't agree with it or not, it's a statement of fact. So the question I want to ask you, husbands, what kind of head are you? You are a head. But what kind of head? Are you head of your wife as Christ is head of the church? Or are you just a lousy bad one? You see, you cannot even, if you want to escape this headship, if you don't want to lead well as you should, you should go back to point number one. The direct lordship of Christ. In what way are you obeying the Lord? What way are you submitting to the direct lordship of Christ? Because if you do, you will fulfill, you will walk by God's design. And that is to be head of the wife as Christ is head of the church. Now, if you do, you will obey the Lord, walk by design. If you don't, you are rebelling against God. Simple as that. Also, if a husband abuses his wife and puts her down every time, you know what? He's in fact proclaiming that Christ abuses his church and puts the church down. That's what he's communicating to the world. If a husband bosses her around and he's this dictator, he's in fact telling the world that Christ is a cruel tyrant. The Gedacha says. Tyrant, is that the word? But also, if a husband does not take up his headship and lead his wife as he should, he cares for her. He, he um, leads her spiritually and, and give himself selflessly. He give himself for her. If he doesn't do that, he's in fact proclaiming that Christ is unloving and the church doesn't have to be under his lordship, his rule. So where does the headship, well, where's the example coming from? As Christ is head of the church. That's how he must be head of his wife. If a husband deserts his wife, either through unfaithfulness or indifference or spending most of his time working on his career or doing his hobbies, staying in his man cave, luckily I can't see the faces. You know. if, he, if he does that, you know what he is? If he neglects her, what he's in fact telling the world is that Christ has abandoned his church and he doesn't have time for her. Am I done? No, I'm not done. But this, is, this is important. The husband is head of the wife as Christ is head of the church. But this is, then I read the next part that says, and is himself its savior. And I thought by myself, but in how can that be? Yes, we are head of the church, and we know Christ is savior. 
But how can we be savior of our wives? Now, I know I read a few commentaries. Some say, no, he's not making a comparison here. It's, and they try to look at the Greek and say it's, it's separated. No, there's an explanation. And let me give you the explanation in, the, in our own chapter, chapter 5. Now, before we go there, let, let me just say this. If you go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, we read that Jesus is Savior of all men. Especially for those who believe. There comes the catch. How can Christ be Savior of all men? Especially only to those who believe. Or especially to those who believe. That makes you think. Because if you're not saved, how can he be your savior? Now, you need to understand what it means. In that context, in that sense, it actually means that Christ preserves life in general. That's what it means when it says he's the savior of all. He preserves life. He blesses man in general with good things from heaven above. All gifts, good gifts, come from above. Even the sun shines on the sinner just as it shines on the believer. Even the breath in your lungs, if you're not a child of God, the breath comes from God. He sustains you. In that context, in 1 Timothy 4, it refers to Christ not saving on the cross, but Christ. Savior of all men, preserving, keeping, sustaining. But especially for those who believe it is in the context of the cross, of salvation. Now let's, let's unwrap this more if you go to Ephesians 5.28. You read this, you, you'll, get the, you'll get the picture. It says, in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies you can buy a husband a self-help book on how to become fit and how to lose weight and how to look good you'll not be offended but husbands never try to buy that book for your wife you'll be in trouble for the rest of your life how to lose weight uh -uh, it's not going to work. But the husbands should love their wives as their own bodies because we, we're kind of okay. Let us just know a book be crazy, it's okay. He loves his wife. He who loves his wife loves himself. Then verse 29 says, No one ever hated his own flesh. That's why I don't believe that self, this is just a side note. Self-hate is not the reason why people commit suicide. Not because of self-hate. Because the Bible says nobody loves, hates their own flesh. It's because of self-love. Now that's a different explanation, but one day I'll go into that more. Verse 21, no one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. It is in that sense that he is Savior, just as he cares, just as Christ cares for the church, cherishes the church, look, um, nourishes the church, protects the church, shields the church. In that, he's, that, he, he's the savior of the body. Now you can, if you see it in this context of the cross, then you must say Christ is the savior of a sinner. But now it says he's the savior of the body of already saved people. In that, in that sense, Christ is the Savior by protecting, by keeping us, preserving us, sustaining us as the body of Christ. Now, if you understand that, you will understand why you as a husband, head of the wife, should be the Savior of your wife. By protecting, by shielding, by caring, by keeping, preserving your family. That's what it means. <clears throat> okay, so the husbands, you can relax. I'm done with you guys. 
Let's go to the Y. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm just joking. Now, I want to talk about the role of the wife. Verse 22 says, Wife, submit to your husband as to the Lord. Verse 24 says, Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now as part of the wife's obedience to Christ, she's under the direct lordship of Christ, as part of her obedience to Christ, she submits to the husband. Fighting against that, and I know our culture is having a warped idea about what it means. Fighting against that is to fight against the designer of marriage. It's like you've got a car, and the manual says you shouldn't put petrol in this car. It's a diesel. You should put diesel in it. If you put diesel in it, it's going to damage it. But the world just doesn't listen to the manual. The designer, they want to put something else in there. They want to change it. Now the world, the world doesn't understand. They rebel against it. Culture rejects it. But you see, the wife's submission to her husband is not a cross that she must bear. It's not a cross that she must bear. It is rather a way of true and lasting joy. Because if you walk by design, you will live by design. Submitting to your husband, it is for your own good. It's for your own joy. If you do what God wants you to do, it will result in ultimate glory. Look at verse 25. I don't, I don't think I've got it on there, but 25 says... Christ loved the church, gave himself up for her. 26, to sanctify her. Verse 27, to present the church in splendor. Can I put another word in there? Glory. To present her in glory, without spot or wrinkle. Hello, Thomas. You want to get rid of the spots? And the wrinkles submit to your husband. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but just as Christ sanctifies his church, and when a husband leads his family, leads his wife, and spiritually take that headship by being the prophet by being the priest of the home, he sanctifies his wife when she submits to him. He teaches his family the God way to walk as God wants us to walk, just as Christ loved his church and willingly gave himself for her by sanctifying her. He, he presents the church in splendor Wives, do you want to be presented in splendor and in glory? Follow God's design. A wife that submits to a husband becomes a beautiful wife. A wife that rebels against her husband becomes ugly. And my wife is not here, so I'm not preaching to her now. But I'll send her the video. <laughs> A wife that doesn't submit, no. When a husband selflessly gives himself for her and a wife submits to his headship, it will lead to ultimate splendor, to glory. It is for your own good. They will find true and lasting joy. Ephesians 5.22 Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Uh, believe me, I, I sat with this text and I contemplated over and over and I, I struggled with it. And yes, even yesterday, I was still struggling with the text. 
And then it, I, it kind of, the light went on. When it says, wives submit to your husband as to the Lord. What does it mean? What does it mean when Paul says, submit to your husband as to the Lord? Does it mean that you should treat your husband just as you should treat the Lord? That he becomes your Lord? No. Well, you should treat him as you would treat any person in an, um, who is a believer. But that's not what it's say, saying. When Paul says you should submit to the husband, you know what, he, what he's doing? He's actually saying you should do that as if you are doing it to the Lord. You do it as to the Lord, as if you are doing it to Christ. You do it as an act of love to the Lord. How do you show your love to the Lord, as to the Lord? How do you show that? Wives, you do that by submitting to your husband. Do you love the Lord? That's an act of love to Christ, by submitting to him. Your submission to your husband is an expression of your love for God. And that's what motivates you to submit. That's what motivates you to submit. Because you want your family to be what God wants it to be. You want to live by God's design because you are under His direct Lordship. You want to obey Him. For that reason, you willingly obey what God says. Does not make you less equal? Does it make you less important? In fact, your husband being the head, you know what Christ did? He was a servant. He serves. He washed feet. Headship doesn't mean I'm here, you there. Headship means I'm here. How can I serve you? That's Christ's leadership. And that's what we should be as husbands. It's not because... Your husband deserves to be. You are no pastor. My husband doesn't deserve the respect. Doesn't deserve my respect. Doesn't deserve my submission. No. You don't do it because of him. You do it because as to the Lord. That's why you do it. It's not because you love your husband. Yes, you should love him, but it's not because you loved him so much that now you will submit to him. It's because you love the Lord so much that you submit to him. That's what as to the Lord means. You submit to him as to the Lord. As you love him, you will do whatever he says. Now let me close. When we walk by design, the world will look at us they will critique, they will say many things, but when they come closer and see our lives, they will marvel. How can this be? When they look at a family, and I know we're not perfect, but when we do what God wants us to do and we walk by design, the world will see a Christian wife joyfully submitting to her husband, respectfully loving him and submitting to and respecting him. They, they will see a wife always seeking the good of her husband. They will see children obeying their parents and parents loving and patiently teaching them the ways of God. When they see that, they marvel. How can this be? How can it be? That is when the family becomes a life testimony to the world. The family in that context becomes the window through which God displays His glory to the world. The family becomes a living testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ because if they see how a wife submits and a husband leads as Christ is the head of the church, they see the gospel. You can understand why it is a warped thing if we don't do it. We don't live by God's design. The world is confused. I'll end with verse 32, which says, This mystery is profound. 
not talking about your husband that is a mystery or your wife that is a mystery. Talking about the relationship between Christ and the church that becomes the example of the relationship between a man and a wife. It's profound. And when the world sees this, they must marvel, be in awe. Because in their minds, that's not how it should be. It doesn't work that way. The relationship between Christ and the church, we see God's design for the family. Family is God's design. Marriage is God's design. Children is God's design. Let's walk by His design. And as church, as I said in the beginning, yes, unfortunately, we live in a broken world. And we should have compassion for those that are living in broken homes. But we should continue to teach what God's design is for each one of us. Amen? Let's come before the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you that we can study it. We thank you that you have not left us in the dark. That you've given us direction. You've told us how to live. Given us your, your word, your commandments, and Lord, it's for our own good. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that helps us living this life that you want us to live, living in according to your design. And it's only possible, and the key ingredient to all of this, Lord, is that you will fill us with your Spirit, that we will be full of the Spirit. And that we will be known as God's children because we live according to your word. Thank you, Lord. Help us to be light in this world in a dark place. Give us grace in this time, the world that is continuing to go against your plans, your designs. Help us, Lord, to shine your light in those places. The darker we get, the more bright we can shine for you as families and as children of God. We thank you for that. We pray your grace and your mercy upon each of our families. And I pray for the, I want to pray for the, for the marriages represented in this church. Lord, there may be some of us here or some of the people here who are struggling in their marriage, who have problems, issues. But I pray that we will just maybe start at the beginning. Help us, Lord, to see our relationship directly under you and your rulership over our lives. May that be the starting point and help us to obey you, Lord, and everything we do as to you. And then we leave the rest for you to work in us and change us. Confess our sins. Our sins we do and our transgressions we, we commit against our partner, against our children, against our families. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to show your love and be an extension of, of your love and grace to the people close to us, but also to, to our families and the world around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to finish with a song. Um, you more than welcome. I know Dirk didn't mention the family that we pray for. Please, on the bulletin, the family that we pray for. If we don't have your details, you can go on, web, on the website, openbaptistchurch.co.za slash update. Leave your details there. I will get, get it and I can add you to the WhatsApp group also so that you can keep in touch with what is happening in the church. If you didn't join the membership class last week, you're welcome to join today as well. Um, more than welcome. Amen. Let's stand and let's finish with the song.